And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Zombie games are a dime a dozen these days. But I guess it would be fair to say that this is not a dime a dozen one. This is the big daddy of all the zombie games out there. Maybe Z-Pocalypse is almost as big. But Zombie Side was one of the biggest game Kickstarters ever. I mean, it made almost a million dollars. Uh, it's a game about fighting off zombies. The question is, we know that the box is full of wonderful miniatures. We know the box is full of a lot of good components. Cool Mini or not did it. They, they do a good job. But the question is, is it a good game? Is it fun? Do you feel like you're at death stores with zombies attacking? Let's see. Now, I don't have a whole scenario board set up here, but there are tons of boards included with the game. Um, they're actually two-sided. That was a white piece of paper. They're, they're two-sided boards that you can make all sorts of scenarios by setting these boards up. And you can make a three-by-three three board, which you could see will be quite large. And, and you do that basically by going through a scenario book and picking which scenario you're going to do. And I'm sure there's many other scenarios online. Each player is going to pick a survivor, someone who survived, and they'll have a card like this. For example, here's Wanda, who is apparently a roller skating waitress who somehow got a hold of a chainsaw. Or you might have, let's see, we got Phil, the disgruntled cop who apparently hangs out with uh, other cops' wives, and we have Josh, the punk here, and then we have Amy, the goth. And we have Ned, hobo with a shotgun. And then we have Doug here, who's a disgruntled office worker, was probably going to go ballistic anyway. When you pick someone, you're going to put this marker here at zero. That's their experience. Each zombie you kill will give you experience. Some zombies give you more than others. And when you get to the yellow zone, you'll get a special ability. For example, he gets an extra action. Everyone gets three actions. When Doug gets to the yellow, he'll get four actions. And then when he gets to the uh, up farther, up to the orange, he'll get an extra action. He gets to choose one of these two, and if he gets it all the way over to the red zone, he can pick one more of these three actions to choose. There's also a spot in the game for you equipping yourself. For example, Doug might have started the game with a pan, but hopefully as the game progresses, he will find something like a shotgun. On player's turn, they have three actions, and an action might be moving from one room to another, or on a street, moving from one street section to another. That's what those walkways are there conveniently for. Uh, it might be to attack a zombie. If a zombie's in the same space as you, and as the game progresses, there will be many zombies <laughs> coming around you. And so as these zombies come, you can fight the ones in your same area. Oh, that's a survivor. Good. Glad he showed up. Or you can fight ones that are far away as long as you have a ranged weapon. Combat in this game is very simple. You take a look at the card. For example, here's two cards. The pan and the shotgun. It shows the range of each of them. See, the pan has a zero range, so you can only hit zombies in the same area. Shotgun, zero to one, so you can shoot zombies that are one zone away. You roll one die for the pan, two dice for the shotgun. For the pan, you need to roll a six. Not going to happen very likely for the shotgun. You can need to roll four higher. And the shotgun does two damage per hit. The pan does one. Which weapon do you prefer? <clears throat> shotgun. There is one difference, though, between the weapons. One advantage the pan has over the shotgun, and that is the pan is silent while the shotgun makes noise. Anytime you make noise, you'll be placing noise tokens where your character is, and noise tokens, zombies tend to move closer to those tokens. Another action you can take in your turn besides fighting zombies and moving is by searching in the room. You can only do this once, which is sad because you'd love to keep searching. And so hopefully you can find other better weapons, maybe a chainsaw or a katana or a sawed off shotgun or a fire axe or a baseball bat or a submachine gun. Sometimes you find stuff that's nice to have, like a flashlight, which lets you search more. Uh, other times you find things that seem worthless, at least for fighting zombies, like water. But the advantage of having water is sometimes a scenario will specifically ask you to find it, or, or like canned food. Other times you'll find gasoline, which by itself is useless. But if you eat gasoline and glass bottles, then you have a Molotov, Molotov cocktail, which is fantastic. But you have to be careful when 
uh, looking for cards because you might find one of these cards, this ah card. Um, I'm sorry, I'm pro I'm, let, me, let me redo that. Ah card because that brings a zombie into your room. And so that's kind of essentially what you're doing. You're moving, you're searching, and you're fighting. You can open doors, and you need actually a tool to open doors. You might find a crowbar or a fire axe. Uh, sometimes when you, some weapons when you open a door make noise. Others you can do it quietly. Uh, you can get in or out of cars. As the game will progress, cars will show up. And cars are great because you can run over zombies with cars. Uh, there's objective tokens that you might have to activate and sometimes you can deliberately make noise just so the zombies will come towards you and away from somebody else. Yeah, because see the zombies are coming. The zombies are coming and there will be different spawn points on the board and zombies that are already on the board will attack and or move depending on what kind of zombie. There are four types of zombies. There are your plain old ordinary walkers, which are done for us in male and female form. That's great. Then we have these cards here, which are politically incorrectly named fatties because I, I, I prefer to call these um, weight challenged zombies. But these guys come at you. They're harder to take down. They You need more damage. You guys are a real pain in the neck. And then there is runners. And these guys, even though physics say zombies can never run, look it up on the internet, it's true. These guys will come after you faster than the other zombies. And then there's the big evil, bad abomination guy who when he shows up, you basically weep and cry and fear and terror. So these guys are coming and there will be spawn. You will draw a spawn card from a spawn deck. And depending on how experienced one person is, so if one person's in the yellow zone, this would bring forth two zombies in that area. If no one had any experience, whew, no zombies. If someone was in the orange, it would bring forth two. But if someone was in the red, then ah, it brings forth five zombies. And each, you draw a card for each spawn point, so it doesn't really matter. Some spawn points bring forth bigger monsters and bad monsters. Some spawn points bring forth fatties. And sometimes they bring forth the abomination, in which case you run, run, run. So the game progresses to you keep, complete your objectives. For example, in scenario one, you need to get to a certain number of the objective points, and then you need to get off the map at a certain point, escape. Uh, and that's a, a much happier thing. And then each objective will have different things. And that's uh, kind of a quick and dirty rundown of the game, but that's how you play. With a positive and a negative. Positive, fantastic production, great artwork. It's, it's a little gory without being, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, there is a guy's head getting exploded here in the front, so I, I guess it's, uh, okay, maybe it is gory. But it, 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 I've seen worse, much, much worse. This has almost, a, not cartoonish, but closer to cartoonish than not. But the production values inside are great. I mean, when you get this, I mean, look at this. This is a bag of plastic miniatures, zombies, and people. That's great. That's a ton. And it looks so fantastic because the zombies will eventually swarm all over the board. They'll be all over the place attacking you, and you're like, wah! So that's neat. The, the, the board looks cool. Looks like abandoned buildings, the cars. Uh, just uh, quality production. Now my negative here is in regards to the rules. When I explained the rules to you, I, I kind of gave you a brief overview and that's almost what the rule book does in a sense. It, it explains how to play and goes through how to play, but there are many times you're like, can I do this, can I do that? And the rules don't answer them. So when we played, and I've heard many people tell me the same thing, they just kind of house rule everything. Well, this is the way it should work thematically. And you could do that, but it would have been nicer had they been more explicit in the, some of the rules saying this works in this situation, so on and so forth. Okay, well that's great. Okay, it, it's, it's not like that, that should dissuade you from buying the game. Because the rules aren't horrible, you understand them. I'm just saying they don't answer many of the things that will crop up in the game and you just have to call things on the fly. But is the game a good game? Well, there's a few things that I don't like about the game. And then there's some things that I do like. What I don't like is I don't like the rules about shooting. Uh, when you shoot into an adjacent area at zombies, you hit them, okay. But if one of your own people is there, you hit your own person first, then zombies. That just drives me nuts. I'm sure that rule was put in the game to make the game a better game or a harder game, but it just makes no sense thematically. I understand that if I shoot and my friends are fighting the zombies, there is a chance that I'll hit my friend, okay? And if there's a chance, it makes sense. But if it's guaranteed to hit my friend, uh, what, did he do something to me? I'm like, well, sorry, Charlie, but now I'll take care of the zombies. It just, that didn't make any sense thematically. Also, the game 
has player elimination. In fact, I didn't mention this in the rules, but real quickly, the way that you, you can lose and, and as everyone dies, you die when a, a zombie gets you, you take a wound card. That wound card takes the place of one of your weapon slots. And you can stick that in your backpack, that wound, but eventually you have enough wounds. If you have no place to put stuff, you, you're dead. Um, that's, that's problematic uh, because this is, can be a fairly long game, two, two and a half hours, and it is possible and you could say bad playing or whatever, but I, I, I would argue, through personal experience, that it is possible for someone to be eliminated in the first 20 minutes. And while that person can go wander off and play another game, it's not nearly as fun to watch people fight zombies as it is to be there yourself. If everybody kind of died near the end, one by one, boom, 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 but it's very easy for someone to get picked off in the beginning because of one poor choice or one mistake or some zombie showing up that they weren't expecting. Uh, and so that can happen. Um, so those are my, my negatives. Now my positives are, does it feel really cool like a zombie movie with zombie hordes? Oh man. I played other zombie games like Zombies or Last Night on Earth, and those felt kind of plotting the zombies coming towards you, and you go around and fight them too. Here, the zombies are plotting towards you, but it feels like this, and you got to keep fighting and fighting and fighting. And then there, this this game allows for just awesome moments, some Molotov cocktail blowing up a whole pile of zombies, you're driving over zombies, you're taking zombies out, just last minute stuff, you know. There's not a huge amount of variety here. It's just basically. Pull out swords and going in and fighting zombies, but it's there. It's very thematic. So, do I recommend it or not? Well, yes, I do recommend it, but I recommend it for a specific group of people. First of all, you have to like zombies. If the theme doesn't interest you, then the game won't interest you because the theme is the game. I think this uh, Z Apocalypse is a pretty good zombie game too. So. This and Z-Pocalypse will be my two top zombie games that are out there right now because I, I enjoyed this. I, I, I don't mind personally dying early, but I can see some people that really bothering and that's kind of uh, uh, And I wish the rules were written a little bit better so that some of these situations that came up, can we do this, can we not do that, would be resolved. But come on, if you just want to cock your shotgun, pull out an Uzi, pull out your machete slash axe and just go to town on zombies, then you really can't get better than that here. So if that is what you're looking for, then you turn this video off and go buy the game now because you are going to love this. If zombie theme is give or take for you and you're just looking for a good game, then I would bypass this one. Not because it's a bad game, but because the theme is so integrated into it that I don't think you would enjoy it. You'd be like, well, all you'd be looking at is mechanics and it, it wouldn't really be good for you. So, zombie side. A big game of the year, a game a lot of people enjoy. I liked playing it. It has flaws. It's not a, it's not a perfect game by any means, but it certainly will bring forth the zombie experience. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.